I'm going to call to order this uh, September 23rd meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, first thing we do is approval of the agenda. Uh, I don't think we'll be, because we don't have quorum, quorum we, can't. we can't technically do any of the official voting items. That's absolutely right. Uh, so this is going to end up being a, a work meeting even if we got, um, so, so we have a fourth member, uh, which actually means we have quorum. We do have a quorum. So in that case, we will approve the agenda. Finally, we can do some work. <laughs> We're official now. <laughs> uh, I do have to leave early at uh, Hopefully. 645. Front load the approving. 645? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it's possible we'll all get out. Um, there's gonna, it's going to be a lot of updates and things this meeting. But okay. Not a lot of action. I don't know. Hopefully. Um, so, okay. So, uh, everyone take a chance. Have, everyone have a chance to take a, take a look at the agenda? Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. By Aaron. Can I second? Mm-hmm. Second by Marcella. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Our agenda is approved. Uh, next item is comments from the chair. Uh, the only thing I have to say is that this Wednesday at the city council meeting, there will be the CVRPC appointment. Um, I've sent a letter to uh, the mayor and uh, city council about that, um, and we and they know that Marcella is our nominee, our chosen nominee. Uh, so should expect that to move along. And I think Mike also had a couple of updates. Um, yeah. So this Wednesday is also the zoning fixes that we approved a while mm -hmm. back. Those are in their final hearing and hopefully adoption on Wednesday, so. Okay, do you, okay, so I'll be out of town to. I don't do expect think, anything, it's been okay. in, it's been the most remarkable set of zoning hearings. Um, they probably had four meetings, just meetings before they warned it and they had no opposition and we had the first public hearing and nobody came out. Okay. Um, so we're confident that it's, been pretty quiet so hopefully this just finishes going through they're mostly zoning fixes so they really should be mostly non-controversial anyways but okay. um, hopefully that goes through um, the second announcement um, this afternoon the downtown board approved our growth center renewal so that is something that was approved in 2009 so in addition to a designated downtown you get a growth center you, you can have a growth center we're one of six in the state um, and so ours, every five years, we have to go through a renewal process. And today we went up and did ours and got, um, got approved, which is, uh, good. And they approved, also approved some addition. Uh, there was a request to add Crestview into the growth center, which is up behind Redstone Terrace Street, between Terrace Street and State Street. There's a piece of land that's mostly woods. Um, and uh, it had been in the growth center and then was removed from the growth center and we asked them to put it back in and they did. So um, that was a request that had been outstanding for a year and a half. And so it's good. We've got that put behind us as well. So, so we, we didn't we didn't add in um, further down Barry Street, though, which is kind of also a place where things Barry are Street growing. is already in out to Sabin's pasture, including Sabin's, including Sabin's. OK, yep. So, the, that's different than the designated downtown, right? The growth the, center. Correct. The designated downtown is the is the core, and everything builds off of that. So if you were to do a neighborhood designation, um, do an NDA, or do a growth center, or do a new town center, there's other programs, but they would all attach to the outside of a designated downtown. And what does the growth center renewal mean to us? Uh, it's just another, it's another program, another set of tools. Um, the purpose of it is that the city commits to trying to have 50% of the future housing and 50% of the future job growth to happen within the growth center. In exchange for making that growth center, so we want 50% of our activity to happen within what is 16% of our town. Um, so we want to have everything in that focused area. Um, and in exchange, the state 
makes a number of things, um, cuts down on, on Act 250. Um, you get a couple other bonuses and benefits, so there are a few other pieces that go in there that it's kind of the the reward for for going through and helping the, the state accomplish its goals. Um, it used to be, initially, you had to have a growth center in order to qualify for tax increment financing. So that was initially why we did it um, in 2009, before I was here. But that was, the in, that was the impetus of it, is if we have a growth center, we can get TIF. And um, so nowadays, you can get a TIF without growth center. It's just a little bit harder, but you can do it. But that's the that was the reasoning behind it, one of the benefits being kind of an easier road to get the TIF, um, but it it sets you up for some other pieces, but that's kind of the, the big picture of the growth center. So that got approved, which is good. It's been working well for us. Um, we've been getting about 85 to 90 percent of our residential growth has been within the growth center, and um, almost 100 percent of the new businesses have. So it's pretty, been working out pretty, pretty well over the past five or 10 years, so. What residential growth has there been in the last five years? Oh, I guess downstreet. You've got project. mostly downstreet <laughs> projects. Um, there have been a couple of private, smaller projects. Um, Steve uh, Ribellini oh, right, had, and, yeah, yeah, had one over there. Um, a couple of smaller infill projects that people have done. Not as much, not as much as we would like, but um, it's still better than seeing. A lot of other communities that would have a much stronger set of subdivisions going on out in the rural districts and we haven't had that so so those were the two um, probably the bigger things that are going on right now I know this isn't exactly in our purview but I'm curious what's the update on the the, um, the court case with the garage it is uh, so there was the 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 project was approved um, locally and the act 250 was approved and both of those were appealed to environmental court I'm not sure if they've been combined yet but they're being heard by the same judge I think um, there were a set of uh, a lot of legal maneuvering and we submitted a motion to dismiss based on a, a set of things that's kind of been the big um, been the big push to kind of go and see um, whether we could get a, a large portion of it dismissed uh, mostly on the grounds that the DRB really doesn't have um, a lot of authority and therefore you can't be appealing things that the DRB doesn't have authority over um, and that's just going to come down to a, the determination by the judge. I, you know, I think it's a good case, but I'm biased. <laughs> we wrote the decision, so we wrote the local decision. So um, we are waiting. It was supposed to get a decision in August to September. Um, they filed some counter motions to try to draw that out. Um, so I'm still hoping to hear something in October. So if it's you're trying to dismiss some things but not everything there's no chance that this will resolve it it would to the to the most part what we've without getting too much into the weeds there there's an acknowledgement that um the drb has the right to regulate landscaping so therefore of all this list of things that they think that the drb didn't do correctly we think there's like one or two that you know, and that those haven't been points of contention. And if there is a point of contention, then the judge could easily make a case on, you know, if, if we're holding up a large project, but for how many trees we need, um, then we can make a much quicker decision. So that's really, I think, where that's coming down to. But it's, it's a much more complicated case than I can summarize but that's a little bit where it is, is is there's the appeal we made a motion they came back with a response to the motion and it's now in the hands of the judge waiting for a, a hearing that I don't know when the date is and a decision hopefully Thank you. 
Okay, so that's it for item three. Item four is uh, general business, uh, comments from the public. We have one member of the public here. Is there something that you'd like to say to the Planning Commission? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lisa Maxwell. I'm the new executive director for the uh, Corporation. So okay. here this week, I officially am on board in November 1st. So I'm just learning and listening. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Well, welcome to the meeting, Lisa. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, we'll move along then, and uh, we'll look at the minutes from September 9th. So everyone can take a look at those. It is what happens. <laughs> I mean, I don't, this isn't a correction, but just for the record in the future, she doesn't re need to refer to me as acting chair. I think I was actually yes, made the chair. Yes, at that point, you are now the chair. Yeah. Um, and I, in this discussion of the boundary, it says the current boundary plus the parts of the designated downtown that are not included, these are required. But the current boundary isn't required. It's just the designated downtown that's required, right? Yeah, I think... Where is it? She, it's a little bit I think confusing. It, yeah, just the wording. Um, these are required. I think just applies to plus the parts of the designated downtown that are currently included, which includes a small part of Berry Street and a little, a little around Miles Court. You know, yeah, we, we did. did. So. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, yeah, um, we definitely made a decision on the college area, so we should remove that from the menace. All right. Yeah. You want to just add that to the paragraph above and say the college area was also discussed? Uh, changes to the college boundary were agreed upon, I guess, but by mm -hmm. the way I'd say it. Yeah, I think we should, it should just try to be vague here because we're not trying to, this isn't. Yeah. Sure. Changes to the college boundary were discussed. Were discussed. Maybe can we just change the first sentence there to say the parts of the designated downtown that are not currently included, these are required? Let's see, um, how about made changes to the boundary to include all portions of the downtown district? Designated downtown? Yeah, sure. <coughs> yeah, the, these, we don't need these are required. <coughs> Did you catch what Aaron said, Mike? Take out these are required and hit me one more time with that. I would just say um, the, the current boundaries were changed to include all of the downtown, a designated downtown. Designated downtown. Yeah. Right. And then I would say, um, uh, there's a discussion to remove four parcels from the district. And then there's that list East Main oh, Street, okay. yep. St. Paul, and a small section of North Field Street. All right. So we don't need this, anything about the small part of Berry Street and Miles Court? Yeah, I don't think we... All right. Yep, I can make those changes. Okay. So do we move the minutes as amended? I forget. Or yeah, 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 I guess so. Uh, so um, 
Sounds like a motion. I move the minutes as suggested <laughs> for approval. Do we, do we have a second? Sure, I'll second. Thank you. Okay, Marcella seconds. Okay, those in favor of amending the minutes as indicated? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that's great. Next item is related. We are uh, we'll discuss next steps for design review proposal in the map. So first thing is, did it all make sense to you, Mike? You, you got the map. Yep, I've got the map. We need it, we need it, I've got it. I think that that's it made the, the, the best um, place that we've recorded yeah. what we discussed. I yep. mean, we, we, you can put it into words, but it's much no. more difficult than the map. No, the map makes sense because um, it did pretty much what we said we were going to do, which was to make the parcels follow mm -hmm. zoning districts or neighborhoods. Um, I think stat, we were a little surprised when we saw it that, that National Life was still in. So I guess that's just an observation. But A lot of our discussions centered around the idea that it could be subdivided and that you could have commercial development go in. Uh, so it's kind of a looking forward kind of thing to keep it in. Yep, but no, that absolutely makes sense based on the, the neighborhoods we drew that would make a lot of sense um, I think we also focus some of our discussion on it's a gateway so mm -hmm. there was it sort of had some plus the the uh, the regs the regs that we're looking at includes a s separate section on the western gateway uh, mm -hmm. so of course I think they just left it in because it was <laughs> because it was there so it was <laughs> yeah. there so Maybe a little back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I mean, we can, I mean, it's something we can visit going forward. But it, it certainly is one that provides um, a reasonable, rational basis that we can take to the public. Um, because the issue we've had is that our design review doesn't have a rational basis, so at least this has a basis. Um, and I guess the next step then is um, what do we want to try to do with this um, from the standpoint of public input? Um, do we want to go to council? Do we want to warn some kind of public input? How would we want to try to get? I think we I think we did anticipate a hearing just for this. We could do one of our own, one of these meetings for it. So, so it doesn't take extra time. What do you guys think? Yeah, that sounds probably the most efficient just because we can then kind of tailor our, we can make any changes to the map based on that and when we do take it to city council we, we can we've got a better basis I, for our recommendation I, th I think in the long run if, if any if we try if we if we didn't have a hearing and there ended up being pushback later yeah. that would extend the process but if we have it now in the long run it'll shorten yeah. and city council can give whatever process they see fit to so, right yeah I mean, yeah eventually we're gonna have to have um, the formal public hearings. I don't think this would be a formal public hearing at this point. We would just be putting out to get um, mm -hmm. some general comments on it to start with and then, because we've got both the proposal and the map, so we're all going to have to really understand stuff and make sure the Planning Commission or the, yeah, the Historic Preservation Commission is ready um, because we're going to have to do outreach to the community and really understand what it means and get letters to the bridge and to the Times Argus so people can get a sense of what it is we're changing and what it is we're changing to. Um, and that, because that always makes or breaks these types of proposals. I don't think the map, the map is making relatively modest changes, so I don't think the map will be an issue. We aren't, we aren't looking to make big inclusions like we did in 2015, 16 we talked about really having a design review that went all the way up to College Street where you're including a lot more properties so, um, so what was our our decision last time I think we were talking about October but I don't know if we're 
I think October would be good. We just get this out of the way so we can move on to the city plan. Think about like the last meeting in October. Sounds good. And before that, you were saying we need to coordinate with the Historic Preservation Commission, like because they help answer questions. They yeah. Be here for that. They're the second. Um, yeah, we might want to put them. On, think, on the on our next agenda, so I, the first October I, meeting, we have a coordination meeting with them. Yeah, yeah. I, it would be nice to get the regs back from them, so that so that the regs are sort of formally yeah, actually, in our position. You're actually waiting on Meredith and I to okay. go through them, which both of us have been in and out on vacation, so we we scheduled some time this week to work on it. Oh, good. It, will it be possible for by the end by our second October meeting to? for historic preservation to have their regs sent back to us? Um, yeah, well, I don't think, I think it'll just be a matter of Meredith and I having something together. We should have something in advance, though, so if we're gonna do that on, if we're gonna meet on the second meeting to talk about the proposal, we should warn the meeting, the public meeting, because we should have it out for the public to view and ask questions and so we would move that to the 11th. So the sense of what you're saying is historic preservation doesn't really have any feedback for us from what we did last? I think it was mostly Meredith and I were going to go through, but I can, I can work with Meredith to get the changes done, and historic preservation is meeting. I keep looking for the calendar that's not there anymore. Um, the second, second Tuesday of October, maybe? So... Oh, which reminds me, the second Monday is a holiday. The 14th? The 14th is a holiday, so I will have to decide what we're doing. Columbus Day. Columbus Day. I just know that. Just don't remember that. So, yeah, let me see what, what we've got, because they'll probably be meeting on the Tuesday, and I can see what their timing is on, on, you know, we'll make changes, we'll get it back to them, see if they have any thoughts on what Meredith and I put together. Um, and then meet back with you, with the Planning Commission for the second meeting in October. Um, and then we'll, we'll warn the public input for the early November instead Does that makes sense if if you want input from HPC they're not meeting any more times in September so it would have to be their October meeting and they usually meet the day after we do I'm okay personally with getting the HPC feedback and having the public hearing at the same time yeah you can synthesize that stuff Okay. All right, then I will try to coordinate for the last meeting in October for our hearing on design review. And I'll try to see if I can get some um, input from them on making some out outreach in support of their proposal, because I'm going to need their help. Um, to digest all the details of it and how they expect it to work. And if that goes relatively well, then we can decide whether or not we want to move forward on adopting it or if we're waiting for guidelines or if they're comfortable adopting them and moving forward with just the regulations and not the guidelines in place yet. Because that was what their next step was going to be. Oh, yeah, writing the guidelines. They're going to write a guideline booklet Yeah, it seems to me that the regs shouldn't be held up by the guidelines. It, that sounded, the guidelines sounded like a big project, like a yeah. lengthy yeah. project. Right. Yeah. yeah, it is a big project. Um, but if the DRC, Design Review Committee, is comfortable implementing these rules without guidebooks, and they don't really use the current guidebooks very much anymore because they were written in 1976. So they pretty much make determinations based on the letter of the regulations anyways um, so 
Okay, I will work with Meredith on that. And That's great. So yeah, what, what might end up happening is maybe the November follow-up meeting is when we maybe figure it out and vote on something. But we'll get all of the feedback and information at that October hearing. And we have time to post for the public. Yeah, it's, as I said, I don't expect this to be a formal adoption hearing. Um, I'm yeah. not treating it like that. I figure this is just a public information, and if we get positive input, then we can move forward to adopting it and going through the formal process. Yeah, we've been thinking of this as like a preliminary. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, know what things we're, we, we've got that look right, what things do people think need to get changed. Okay, that's great. So we'll move on to the next item, which is uh, Mike is going to give us the big update on what the staff's been working on for the implementation plans. Um, and you have an example from the Historic Preservation and Housing for uh, implementation plans for the city plan? Right. Well, I had some strikeout versions that I got. And but this is this was based off of the template that John created, right? Just, or a heavily modified version? Or? This is actually based on, there was a model that I had created, and this is historic. So Historic has already reviewed and approved theirs. Housing has had theirs for a while. I can hand it out. But they wanted to have one more meeting. So they asked me to Do we have an extra come back. Ah, I've got an extra Historic. I have an extra housing. These are, these are kind of historic, first drafts, historic. first sec sections of the city plan we're working on. So uh, we're very idea. early in the process of redoing the city plan. So this is some, some, of, the, some of the first feedback we've gotten. It looked familiar compared to the um, economic development one. Yes. So uh, it's, it's not based on what John put in. It's actually, if, if you remember, I had done some implementation outlines of how we could do it mm -hmm. and uh, we had the example of the butterfly with rainbows and unicorns and you know how things went mm -hmm. <laughs> just just as the way to get everyone thinking about it and then uh, you know we were looking when you do the implementation you know, you've got to have your vision what is it we're trying to do and then break that vision into goals that are steps and then the strategies we really want to start forcing into different into different boxes uh, is are, are we suggesting a policy change what are our values how do we spend our money um, is it a regulation you know do we need to regulate something and if it does then it has to meet certain rules and then uh, is it a project one Taylor Street's a project um, we do it's something you do once you don't build many one Taylor Street's you only build one so some, some goals you're going to accomplish by doing projects, others are programs, things you do over and over again. Tax stabilization, um, uh, first time home buyer programs. How can we, what's our problem and how are we going to fix it? Uh, we need to get, in the, actually in the case of the first time home buyer program, it was how do we get more kids in the schools? We get kids, you know, we get funding from the state based on the number of kids in schools. So how do we get more kids in schools? Well, it's an expensive town to move here. How can we get young families to move here being as expensive? So we have a first time home buyer program, which feels all warm and fuzzy. The nuts and bolts of it are actually goes back to the fact that we just wanted to get more kids in school so we could get more funding to support our schools. And it works. <laughs> and the fact that we give $10,000 to buy a house, um, and we get $17,000 per child that goes to school. So it kind of pays for itself relatively quickly. Um, so that was the kind of the impetus behind it. But it is, it is still a, a feel-good thing. We do want to work on it for affordability reasons. Um, 
but that's the that's the program side so you have just different boxes that we try to fit things in um, and the hope is that when you read it backwards or when you read it forwards that you'd be able to go and say all right here's our goal um, if we do our strategies do we accomplish our goal um, and let's make sure that when we did these we also looked back at all the things that we already do because in some cases maybe we're doing things that are be, that are either counterproductive or not really useful at all um, so we have a housing preservation grant program that's existed for 10 or 20 years and it actually has a lot of money in it but it wasn't doing any good because the program wasn't really set up to be successful. So how could we repurpose the money that's in that fund to better achieve the goals of what we wanted to do? So that was one of the things that Housing Committee was working on was how could we take that revolving loan fund, um, basically it was a revolving loan fund that said we could only give money to people who couldn't afford to pay us back. Which it kind of defeats the purpose of being a revolving loan fund if, it, <laughs> if I'm intentionally giving it to people who can't pay me back. Um, you have to first not get qualified for a loan, and then we'll give you the money. So it wasn't the, the best structured program, so we found a better program that would help us to be able to support other, other organizations that fund similar programs. So it's a little bit easier for us to go through and say, hey, we'll match your grant that you offer for low-income people to fix up their house. If Capstone has a program, then we don't have to do the administration. All we have to know is Capstone has qualified applicant X for a grant. We can match that grant to help that president of Montpelier um, rather than try to go around figuring out how to run a program on our own. So a lot of these, that's what they're doing. Is what are we doing that isn't working or is counterproductive and how can we do it better and so that's what we did with the housing program was to really and they have a lot of goals so housing is a more complex topic than say historic and cultural resources where they have I believe a single yeah they have a single aspiration um, whereas housing had four aspirations uh, historic and cultural resources has uh, just one and I worked I worked with them, gave them a number of options. You could do it this way, you can do it that way. And they they chose their aspiration. Then the goals break that aspiration into a number of bite-sized pieces and then strategies to accomplish the goal. So um, that was how we worked with this one. And that worked the same for the housing. And as I mentioned, I have a draft for economic development that we've just, Lisa and I have just started to work on. Um, and we'll work on more when she when she gets here so that way we've got an economic development plan um, I've started utilities and facilities I have started a bunch on energy um, the energy plan we're putting in a municipal planning grant to really take the energy plan to another level so um, by the way, does the, does the energy, I'm, I'm assuming so, but does the energy committee know about the event that the Regional Planning Commission's putting on the energy summit? Yes, I believe we I forwarded those to Jamie, who is going to forward them on, but I can try to make sure we get those out. I think there's also a transportation forum that I sent to Kevin, our community development specialist who works with the transportation committee to make sure they've got that on, sent out to them as well. Okay. And yeah, and we uh, worked with the, I worked was working with the Regional Planning Commission on their interest in doing parts of the energy plan, which they are interested in helping out with, because they have the expertise in doing what is the enhanced energy analysis, which is a requirement in order to provide comment to the Public Utility Commission. So I always remember these by the acronym PUC. Um, so the, in order to do that, you have to have a uh, energy plan that meets a certain level and has a certain number of analysis so they'll, they're going to help us with that through the municipal planning grant hopefully um, but this was as I said this is one my goal was to work with the different committees start to get these implementation strategies together and then start boxing them up and getting to, to you guys as they approve them so as I said historic is is here it's yours you guys can start reviewing it. it it may be easier to review in context with other ones 
housing hopefully will be approved next month okay. and so on and I'm just going to keep trying to crank these things out so when you say you're working on utilities and facilities are you working on that or is there a committee I'm so I'm working on what I do is I put together uh, an analysis and I, I start to frame things out so I don't necessarily write it out for them but I put together a notes to go through and say um, you know this this is what we're trying to do I, I explain to them I do the butterflies and rainbows thing with them and explain to them how we're trying to do this and then I start to put some things out to say this is some things you do already are there things, other things you could be doing that you're interested in doing? Are there things we should be studying? No, I guess my question was more, are there sections of the city plan that don't correlate to a committee? Yeah, utilities does not have a committee. So you're just working on I would be working something. on that with the, the public works department. Okay. And actually, which surprises me a little bit, um, public safety does not have a committee. Of all the committees, we don't have a public safety committee. So that one will be another one that I'll probably work with the chiefs on and then take the city council or, or get some input on what our policies and our goals are with respect to public safety. Um, but we do have a community services committee, transportation, um, and land use is you guys. So that would be the other one. Um, as we look to future agenda items, we started talking about it, and I think that was what John had some information on um, using a little bit of that maintain, evolve, transform, looking at those maps. What do we want to? What do we want to see stay? What do we want to see things change? And I think what we would want to try to do is to start thinking about that in context of the land use, because you guys are going to be the ones to pull that together, and then we can see. Okay. And you know we're, we're going to have our chance also to modify the sections as they come in. Yeah, and and everybody's made aware of that. Um, you know I've told them it's not just so it's not just this is not the housing committee's plan. It is the city's housing plan. So in some cases there are things in here that they may not specifically do, but they're aware of what their role is. And then. It's explained to them that once it comes here, your job is going to be to, to look at them and see how they relate to each other. Um, are there things that are missing? Are there things that are conflicting? You know, Do we have things in the historic plan that conflict with the energy plan? Those types of conflicts or, or pieces. Um, so I see that as a key role for you guys. And once we have the implementation plans, then we can go back. What I look at is going back to writing the chapters where and I've explained to the committees that you know once we kind of know what our goals and strategies are we can write a plan that's going to help tell the story rather than just have a plan that's full of 500 pages of data and charts and graphs we can actually spend a, a chunk a thousand words to 1500 words that explains you know why housing is important and what are we looking at and then link to these other plans and if people really want to go you know if somebody's a real housing wonk they can go at the barriers analysis from 2012 and the other studies that we can link to um, but really what's important in the housing plan that the public would read is why housing is important and why we are, why our aspiration is what it is. You know, why is it important? Why do we, you know, why is one of our goals to have a healthy housing market? Well, because 90 plus percent of the housing that you're going to live in is going to be from the housing market. So while it's important to have subsidized housing and that's going to play an important and key role. We also have to make sure that we're doing what we can to make sure that the market is operating well enough that housing doesn't continue to get unaffordable. And that means making sure we have land available for housing development. And that's what they get into in their aspiration A. So, and we try to throw everything we can in here. And in some of these things may end up falling out in the end because everybody wants to be a part of the tax stabilization program and the city just goes and says, no, everybody can't get tax stabilizations. We're going to save this only for these things. In which case, even though it's in here as a proposal, this is kind of 
what they would like, knowing that somebody somebody down the line, us, city council, may come in and go and say, no, that's, you know, we're not going to amend our tax stabilization program to support X, Y, or Z. Um, this does seem like the best one to me. What? Housing. Oh, tax. Mm -hmm. for the tax stabilization. Yeah, to get more originally. Yeah, stuff. it's it's tough. You can't, uh, under state law, we can't, um, which I didn't know when I initially wrote this, uh, we can only do it for commercial properties. So you can do it for commercial housing, but you can't do it for... So it's to help with the rental market, not homeownership necessarily. But. Yeah, and, and technically it's only supposed to be for commercial and industrial um, I, I would be interested in kind of drilling oh, into the saying, enabling rules. In this, in this rules. case, rentals wouldn't be considered commercial. Is that what you're saying? Uh, as if the rental, the rental has to be at least five units. I think at five units it becomes a commercial apartment okay. under the tax assessing rules. Um, I would, I haven't personally drilled into the enabling rules, so so everybody knows we're we're not a home rule state. So we can only do what the state says we can do. So if the state says you're allowed to give tax stabilizations for commercial and industrial, that's all we can do. We can't stabilize a residential property. Um, but if we define commercial apartments as five or more, then it's a commercial property, and we can therefore give them a tax stabilization. But uh, I, don't, I haven't read the specific enabling rules to see how flexible the rules are in there. but. It would be important to see, especially with the housing, um, because it's one of these things that lowers the cost. If, if what we're looking at, the reason why we don't get more housing built is the cost. It costs more to build than you can sell them for unless you're building really expensive housing. So we've got to figure out how to bring the cost down so that way developers can see, can see a profit and then they can turn and say, well, if I can get a return on my investment, I'm going to spend a million dollars to build a quadplex knowing I'm going to get the money back because I can tax stabilize the property for the first four or five years and uh, get revenues in. in. In this case, it would be only municipal taxes, right? In this um, case, it would only be municipal taxes. Which in Montpelier is high, so it matters. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's like 40% of your tax bill. So Which is which higher is, than just about everywhere else in Vermont. It is. The overall tax bill probably is on the higher end. How high the municipal portion is. Yeah, I guess the municipal portion would be because we because we have more services, we have more a higher municipal tax bill. Yeah, and our schools are actually I think pretty pretty good staying close to average at spending mm -hmm. of the municipal part. So I, I'm just pointing that out to say that Montpelier is a good candidate to use tax stabilization as a leverage. Yeah, no, we used them very successfully when I was in Barry. It's a, it's a, you know, there's a lot of good, a lot of good programs. And so the other thing we've been trying to do with each one of these committees is to try to draw them out of their, their, their silos and try to make them think broadly about how you would, um, you know, what are, what are all the tools, you know, that we could bring to bear on, on accomplishing our goals. If we wanted 150 more housing units, you know, um, we always we always point out, you know, part of my job I'm responsible for trying to get 150 housing units in five years, but I'm not going to pick up one hammer, I'm not going to pound one nail, but I still have to figure out how I'm going to encourage 150 housing units. Um, and that's the same way for economic development. I mean, how do you do it when you're not actually hiring? How do I get 500 more employees if I'm not going to hire anybody? So I'm thinking one conversation we'll be having is whether 150 in five years is ambitious enough, which not to bring Mike's blood pressure up. <laughs> it seems that we talk about housing a lot as a land use and uh, just a, you know. That was the number in the issue. EDSP that was put in there. Um, and we honestly, you know, we, we had actually thought about having the number higher and then they were, they pushed to go with the 150 in five years which would translate to 240 in eight years because our plan's good for eight years, so. What's the EDSP? Uh, Economic Development Strategic Plan. So it's a plan, it was developed in 2016 um, that was intended, uh, it created the MDC as the 
um, kind of the agent that would move the plan forward. What's the MTC? Uh, Montpelier Development Corp. Thanks. Yeah. And so that that's that's one of the ones they had a, a number of pillars and a number of objectives, including um, trying to get another hotel in the downtown, mm -hmm. um, and getting a number of housing units built. Those things don't have to match, though, right? I mean, because nope. that, that plan is from you know three or four years ago, so. It's going to provide input more, into so our, fine. yes, yeah, it, that was the foundation that was built at that time, but if we have more aggressive goals, um, then, you know, we, we already know we're going to be closing in on 100 units pretty quick, um, just with projects that are already happening. Projects, yeah, 18. Um, yeah, there was 18, there's the 30 for the transit center. That's 50, almost 50. We had six from Maple Tree Place there. We've got um, got a couple other projects that have happened, smaller ones here and there. So, well, we, yeah, we definitely want to be, to make our aspirational goal something that goes well beyond what we know is definitely going to already happen or, or most likely going to already happen. Well, those. Keeping in mind, those happened after we <laughs> we had, we adopted the plan in 2016, and in the three years we've we're, uh, okay. we, we're closing in on you're talking, on okay, you're talking about yeah. how, oh, these are 100 that are going to meet that original yeah goal. to okay, meet the sorry, original sorry. goal of 150. Yeah. So yeah, we've had people who've come in. Um, I know uh, the city manager has thrown out numbers like, why can't we talk about a thousand new housing units? Um, I think it all comes down to what's the vision, what's the goal, what are our aspirations. And then we start talking about what would it take to get there and are we willing to get there because, you know, nothing's going to be free. So the bigger the goal, the more money we've got to put towards it and how much money is city council and other folks willing to put, you know, housing is one of many goals. Um, having complete streets and building bike lanes and um, having net zero by 2030 and the net zero community by 2050, um, each one of those is going to cost money. So at a certain point, it'll come down to balancing. But that's not my job. That's <laughs> I make recommendations, and everyone else has the hard job of making the decisions. Um, but uh, as where it is right now, this is where it is. And I think we can certainly, once it's in your hands, you guys are welcome to make adjustments to that and I don't think the City Council would be opposed to having more housing I'm think I'm not thinking of in like using incentives or spending money I'm thinking the demand is very much there and finding out what we can do to allow that demand manifest into housing what, what, what do we need to remove from what's stopping people yeah, I mean, certainly if somebody came up and had a proposal, had a 10-year proposal for the VCFA and Savings Pasture parcel and said, we're going to build, you know, 250 units, you know, I'm not going to say, well, you really should stop at 150 because that's our goal. Um, you know, I think that we just think we need at least this much to start to tip the scale of the market because right now there's, there's nothing less than 1% vacancy rates and houses stay on the market for days and weeks, not months. Yeah. So uh, we just need to have more supply out there so that way the price stops going up and up and up and up, making things more unaffordable. And maybe 150 won't tip the scale, but 150 was our start. So planning to plan, um, how, what do you think we should we should do as far as our work on this? Um, should we start going through the implementation plans one by one, or? Uh, I would certainly take the time to go through, um, like historic and cultural housing, as I said, I got one more meeting on them, but go through and start reading historic and cultural you know, understand what their goals are, understand what their their aspiration is, and start reading the strategies. And and this question came up, and I should remind everybody. Um, the the purpose of a lot of the the highlighted pieces in these, the italics, um, was that when this is done, and 
this is, as I said, this, this is trying to not let good get, or great get in the way of good. Um, eventually, we would like to have these be hyperlinks. So this is going to be a digital plan. And that was what John and I had talked a lot about was we didn't want to make another paper plan. We'd rather have something that's online that people can really interact with. And so if you were, you know, uh, at the bottom of this one, conduct a survey for archaeological sensitive areas and map the resources. Um, that's an informational piece. Um, but if somebody wanted to know, what, you know, what is that? Why would we be doing that? You could click on that and get more information. But if we were to put all the information on that in each one of these, suddenly our implementation plan is really big. So the idea was just lay out what it is, and then if somebody wants it, they can click on it, and there would be a much bigger description. Or maybe you hover the mouse over it, and it pops up into a pop-up box or something like that. That's the tech stuff that John knows um, as to what you could do. Who's going to write that content? I think that's something that would happen over time um, because it's a chicken and egg. Until, until the plan's adopted, it's tough to write because some of these go into multiple, multiple let's say zoning. The zoning may end up having a large amount of pieces just because the Unified Development Regulations touches on so many chapters. But if you were to click on it, it would be able to go in and, and tell you what these things are, or uh, designated downtown may relate to a number of things, and you can click on it and understand more about the designated downtown program. But until this is adopted, I, d I can't really reference back to, can't do the how it all connects until it gets adopted, then, then you can go through and do the next level. So you're thinking these links aren't going to be part of the plan, They're, it's just more of like a they won't be active. Extra re outside resources. Yeah, they probably won't be active at the time we adopt the plan. Okay. The final piece that would go along with this in my big world dreams of dreams is once the plan is, once the, so we adopt the plan, we've got the framework plan, it gets adopted. I can then start going through and, and putting together the, the hyperlinks and the pieces that we can just keep adding in over time to support that. And the last piece that I would like to see is something that a lot of other communities around the country are going to, which is to do um, videos. And I would love to, um, actually the Montpelier Alive hired somebody to do some videos um, of their for their stuff, and they were really good. I guess they were somebody who actually did this type of work in New York City. They either retired or they came up here um, and so they did some work for them and they were fantastic. And so if we could get somebody who could do the videos, um, there are places in Texas and a couple other communities that have done this and they found that visits to their city plan websites, 83% of the traffic went through the videos. So people weren't reading the transportation plan, people were clicking on the transportation plan, clicking on the video, and then the video has a 10 minute video on what is the transportation plan. And what are the plans, what are the goals, and how are we going to do it? Um, and it's, it's a great educational piece. But again, that's another large step. But you can't do videos until you have the adopted plan. But I would eventually like to go through and say, hey, if we could uh, adopt this plan in 2020 or 2021, and then look at 2021 and 2022 as opportunities to kind of backfill that with the supporting documentation that would really you know, if somebody wants to know historic or economic development or whatever it is, you could click on that and have that. And that should tightly reflect our 1,000 words um, description. You know, it's, it, the written word is obviously different than the spoken video word, so they're not going to match exactly. But you really want to have a written text that would be in the plan. But if you click on the video, you'll get a very similar presentation of the of the information I'm glad to hear you lay out like when we're going to do things because I think previously we've talked about this I feel like we've had like an eating an elephant type problem of, like what well, we're doing we're doing videos and we're doing this entire plan and we're doing website and we're like it just seemed like it, it, it is it's way too much but so it's to think about let's concentrate on the plan section by section and the chapters and the written part and then the website links and the videos. That's all are afterwards. awesome things that we can, we'll, we'll know we'll work on later. 
They don't have to be. Yep. And if they don't happen, then people just have questions. You know, what, what do you mean archaeological insensitive? And they'd have to ask me or ask the Historic Preservation Commission, when you wanted to do that, why, why are you interested in that? And we can explain, well, it makes it easier for people to design projects for Act 250 if they understand where the archaeological sensitive areas are. And it's just a, it's it's to help help applicants in their process, but also helps the historic preservation understand if we have a lot of archaeological sensitive areas in the in the same place, then maybe we protect those by using a different tool, not regulatory, but um, Highgate, for example, is has a lot of Indian burial grounds. So for them, understanding their archaeologically sensitive areas could be critical, not only for Act 250, but it may make sense to go through and say, you know, from from an ethical, moral standpoint, maybe our best approach is to go through and purchase the development rights or purchase the property that these um, burial mounds and other things are located. But I don't think we'll have anything to that degree. I think for us, it's mostly going to be understanding where, where our archaeological resources exist and is there something we should be doing about it? Something we should be, or is it just information? Are you but, saying that Highgate and Barry is on archaeological burial grounds? No, oh, Highgate. No, no, no. The okay. town, the town of Highgate. Oh, okay. Sorry, yes. I missed that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have been. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't no, even I thinking of that. Kind of like spaced out for a second, and then I was like, Whoa, Wait, Highgate? That's... No, okay. definitely not. Just, just no, the town of Highgate that. up okay. at the Canadian okay. border sorry. on. Random. Yes. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the sense. If you, you know, as I said, to read through it, and some of these you might go through and say, I don't understand what this is. It's, it may come down to the fact that um, they understand what a certified local government is. You may have never heard of it. But the Historic Preservation Commission knows what it means, and they put it in there. Um, and we just may have to explain some pieces to other people. So then is the thinking that basically public comment will come from posting these sections when we're satisfied with them on the website? Or uh, given the, how interrelated some of the sections are going to be, it sort of feels like it'd be hard to, if we want to not post things until it's all done. I'm just curious about the that's a, uh, Yeah, that's a really great idea. Would it be possible? So we'll get these mm -hmm. implementation plans. We'll go through them, add and subtract. Maybe then the next step should be at, at, to put Make work something out with a bridge or something. Yeah, or yeah, put we them in the bridge, and then then we move on to the next one while we wait for comments. That, no, I mean I'm all for public input, but I I've worked on some stuff not related to this. But mm -hmm. if you have like a multi, if you have like a multi prong plan like this, it's in my experience it's better to have final finished package yeah. to comment on. You start putting out pieces, especially if you stagger them, yeah. the release of them, you're just going to get bogged down in sort of the, the give and take. Like you give them a final package, people. Okay. Like my experience is the public tends to prioritize what's important to comment on, as opposed to giving them bits and pieces at a time where they're just sort of commenting as things come in and we'll just yeah. get bogged down. That's I'm, a good point. I, I'm all for input, but it just seems more efficient to do it as a final yeah. piece. Yeah, I was, I was thinking we would get a little bit of the comments out of the way early that way, but I think you're probably right. Yeah. It's just, it would bog it down. Yeah, I just, I worked on something like that, and we found that as we were putting stuff out, it would just, you would just get a slew of comments, and as, as you were grappling with that when it was coming back, you'd be pointing something else yeah, out. you're trying and, to and, amend the historic and, while you're right, trying to you're, present the housing, and right, then by the time you're... You're trying to figure out how you're going to fit this stuff together to begin with, like, with what you have in place. You layer that on with public comments while you're trying to do that. It becomes impossible. So I just... That's a good point. It's, it's better to sort of redline a complete package and work on that, I think, than sort of redline and, while you're putting it together. And, and we may be able to put together um, more coherent outreach <coughs> for public input. You know, we may be able to bring in facilitators to go through and say, you know, we're going to do some, you know, let's present the plan. Yeah. This is what we've been working on. This is how we got here. But now we need public input. We yeah. can do it, break people into breakout groups and be able to talk about, you know, if you're interested in, in historic and housing, and then we can switch people, you know, you may be interested right. in a couple of different things. We can rotate through. Right. Um, and do that a couple of times, you know, have two or three meetings um, to try to help 
people to get some time to understand what we're doing, you know, why we're doing it, why it's important. Um, you know, because certainly this all ties back into being able to. Um, each one of the committees is trying to look at this as, all right, what's my eight-year work plan going to be? And we're trying to go and say, look, you're not going to do your eight-year work plan here, but you do got to start thinking about what would you do, what types of things do you think you want to look at, and then. Yeah, how many of these implementation strategies are you? They'll end up being 12. 12 of these? Okay. Yep. And that includes the two that are sort of outside the committees that you were talking about, public safety and utilities? Yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, and it, it'll be it'll be close to twelve. There's going to be one on governance that's not required, but I think I think there's enough that goes on in Montpelier that governance will be one that I'll have to work with city council and the manager's office to put together. Um, yeah, historic housing, energy, land use, transportation, utilities and facilities, governance, economic development. No, I'm starting to lose track of what. It's okay. It's said, not a quiz. But, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets you an idea. Just think about the committees that we have, yeah. um, and a lot of times, um, you know, we're going to be required to have an an education plan. But I think that's rolled into the community services, um, public safety. Maybe that's separate. Maybe that's rolled into community services. I don't know how they want to see that, but there are a couple of them that. So maybe twelve, maybe eleven. And. How are you thinking of, of doing the chapter writing? Um, is this something staff will do here, or should we personally work on writing any of that, or something else? If there's there's always if there's people who want to work on it. Otherwise, it's probably something I was going to um, try to to continue to work on. It also may be something that we eventually try to draw in some additional help in the form of a grant if we decide to go through and hire hire a consultant to go and help put that together. It really depends on the amount of work staff and commissions want to put into it. If commissions go and say, hey, I'd like to write my own historic chapter, then we can say, okay, you've got a thousand words, <laughs> right. a thousand to fifteen hundred words, and, yeah. and explain the values. But we, I would probably want to do at least one that we would all review and then go and say, Here's here's the land use, just so you guys get a flavor of how we're talking about things. You know, just just mm -hmm. so we don't get stylistically oh, twelve we, we, completely yeah. different. This land use will be ours, so we'll write the chapter on that, and then that can be used. As yeah, and we can say others. here's here's a guidance that you can kind of work from because of you know, unless people, you know, really it's the city plan. I mean, if so, so you so you think of the committees possibly writing the chapters then. I was thinking I was going to do most of the drafting and they were going to go through and do most of the editing to make sure it met there because we wanted to get a single voice. It could always work the other way that they write what they think and then we sit down and rewrite it to go through and say, you know, you told us this, but we've got to have this plan sound consistent, so we're going to rewrite what you wrote. Okay. But I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Um, my focus has been on, personally, has been on trying to do the implementation strategies because I think there, there's a challenge and a little bit of an art to doing, to writing these and forcing things, you know, into their right boxes and, and how to phrase things. You know, is it new? You know, are we continuing something? Are we amending something? Are we doing something new? Um, and then, you know, having specific things so I, I've been trying to do this once it gets out of this then I'm open to getting help writing chapters okay this all seems much more manageable than it one time did to me so. yes <laughs> okay. especially when you hear that I'll be writing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So historically, it's always been handled by the planning commission chair. Yes. <laughs> I don't the, the thousand words like succinct chapter thing. Actually, that seems appealing to me. 
Yeah, until you have yeah. 12 chapters and you've got 12,000 12, words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, writing a short story yeah. doesn't seem... But. Yeah, it's, it's not as bad. Once you get going and once you get rolling, uh, the issue that comes up is you, everything has to meet state statute. So eventually we have to talk about certain things, which means if you don't talk about it in those thousand words, we have to have it as a separate document that we link to it. In a lot of cases, we have this stuff. Um, when we have a, we need to have a complete streets plan. Well, we have, already have a complete streets plan. All we have to do is link to it. And now, now we can expend our thousand words talking about why why is complete streets important and why is it important to you the homeowner in Montpelier um, you know what is what are complete streets why is it important why do we why do we talk about it so much with our transportation plan you know and and I think that's more important than actually getting into the nuts and bolts of you know are we going to have two sidewalks on Barry Street or are we only going to have one and what are we going to do about east State Street. Well, we don't need to talk about that. That's in the plan. Can you tell me the 12 sections? All right. Pop quiz. <laughs> Pop quiz. Um, so housing. Housing. housing uh, historic preservation. Historic preservation. Energy. energy. Economic. Utility. Uh, utilities. Economic. Economic development. Yep. Uh, it's uh, uh, technically, I think it's called community, uh, community services. Okay. Uh, land use. Land use. Yeah. I think you've actually showed us this before. It's coming back to me now. Governance. Mm -hmm. Transportation. Is that on there? No. Three more. No energy is, or no um, education is in community facilities. Um, is this statutory? Yeah, it's statutory. I've seen it. Well, a lot of them are statutory, but there are a couple of them that are outside. Uh, I'll probably kick myself because I probably have some that I've already written. Is on recreation? Oh, natural resources. Conservation Commission. That's Conservation Commission mm -hmm. and Parks. That's where the recreation helped. I don't think recreation... Uh, recreation usually falls under community services. No. Just like our community services department we have includes our senior center, recreation, parks, trees. I'm just asking because I was... What, what I'll do to follow up on this meeting is send everyone a sort of city plan timeline outline and go through to give everyone a heads up of how we'll be approaching it. And so if anyone's un, unhappy with that, then this will that'll give them a chance. But one of them will be to like to bring up the 12 sections because we have, we have I know we've discussed at some point or another like possibility of adding additional sections. So yep. I think listing them out might help. Uh, I think public safety ahead is a separate one, emergency services. One more, because I get an A minus. Are you trying to look at what I've sent you in the past? Probably look it up online. It's four three four three eight two. Is that regional plan? Um. All right. Well, maybe I can figure it out later. Um, yeah. So, okay. anyways, that gets you a good good chunk of them, and at some point something will pop in my head for the last one. I, that we're I think it'll be good to lay out the plan so we can stop having meetings about planning planning, and actually stick to substance for all of our meetings from now on, um, yep. and go through the information to plans. Yeah, if you start one. to being able to, like I said, if, if at the next meeting 
you know, ignoring, I don't know, like I said, I've got to figure out what the next meeting is. If the next meeting is actually four weeks from now, then that's the historic. Of course, maybe it's appropriate yeah. to review the historic implementation plan on the same day that we do a hearing on um, so the proposal. Leave mm -hmm. at 645, so yeah. can we briefly talk about the uh, Columbus Day and whether we're Um, I'm not here, so I don't know if we're scheduling an altern alternate night to try to meet or if we're just think that missing would, that meeting. I think it, those are the two choices, it seems like, yeah. I don't, I don't feel the pressure for us to have to meet that week. We're, we're planning to do the hearing, as long as we have all of our ducks in a row for that. So maybe, like, if you'll be in touch with me, Mike, if anything comes up, if we need to do anything prior to that meeting but okay yeah because I'll try to push I'll try to lean on historic preservation to see if they'll do any outreach um, and I can put out some stuff on your behalf um, to the to the press to go through and see if we can um, encourage input I was gonna ask you about that is that something the outreach to the press is that something that your office usually does or participate in that um usually it comes out of the the i guess the legal stuff always generally comes out of ours and getting warnings out but if people want to advocate for things that's certainly always your position on the board you've got that right i mean when we were doing the zoning we had um a number of times i think kim would occasionally write stuff on his own or barb would write stuff to the papers letters to the editor to go through and say no 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 the public is you know you know, I'm hearing, seeing a lot of stuff in the papers about misrepresenting what we're working on on the Planning Commission, and this is what we're working on. Okay, so the notifications you're talking about for the Times Argus and the Bridge are kind of legal public warnings? Yeah, we would probably put one. We would, well, it wouldn't be necessarily a legal warning in some sense. It's just a matter of um, Jamie is kind of like our public informations officer so anytime we're going to have a, a formal meeting we'll go through and run it through her so that way we've got enough meeting space should it be here should we warn it somewhere else um, we'd probably try to have it here i would just try to reserve the memorial room so we've got both sides in case we get a large crowd um, and then get the formal things out to the times argus so they've got a press release but beyond the press release, it would probably be encouraging input from. So no meeting on Columbus Day. We'll okay. Just, we will meet. Um, Sounds good. We may there may be some emails yeah. just about yeah. preparing right. for the next meeting. Okay. Do we need to formally adjourn before she leaves while we can, or do you just like <laughs> leave it hanging? <laughs> no, we just can't vote on anything. Okay. Oh, I, I so she's she's about to vote to adjourn. How really think about that? That's a good call. Jeez. She's sure. To adjourn. Well, we'll, go home. Um, we'll we'll still be holding a working session, okay. so I don't think we need to do anything. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for here. We're stuck here forever. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this meeting will never end. Yeah. It will exist always. Had uh, enough votes to open the hearing and not enough to end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This Costco situation. We're right. stuck in yeah. meeting purgatory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, the only thing else on the agenda is to discuss the vision statement. Um, Which I didn't, I should have looked at the agenda a little bit earlier to print, reprint that out because I think I had forwarded it to you guys. But I Yeah, we have it in our out. email for sure. Um, well, yeah. just. It was the thing just, about like service. Yes, yeah, so it was all about much. service. That was a, that's yeah, the Montpelier like, serves. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's not something we need to like work on right now, right? Like, no. What, what place does that have in the scheme of this? Um, I think we had that in the context of when we were starting the plan. Um, I think maybe it was John mm -hmm. was kind of talking about maybe maybe we need to have an overall vision that we're starting with. And um, I mentioned that they had done this branding exercise. I couldn't remember what it said. Oh, um, this was the. No, I'll tell you, a good place for humans or something. Is that, or, yeah. That's what it was. It was a like, branding thing. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, yeah it, was, it was a branding thing that um, had been worked on. 
and it was, you know, I think it was good for what it was trying to do. I don't think it necessarily translates to our city plan effort, though. Or at least that was my thought. Video. Can we can we just talk about doing the vision state or plan to do the vision statement around the same time we write the chapters? Does that seem like inappropriate? Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be, a, I think a, a compilation of all of it anyways. I, w I would think, I would have done it last. He wanted to do it first to kind of build. I don't think there's a right or a wrong to that. Um, it's just. You know, just just as we said, we're doing these backwards. We're you know most most communities will write the text of their plans and describe all the analyses, you know, do all their graphs and tables, and then afterwards write their implementation plan. We've decided, you know, what's most important to us, having a strategic plan, so we figure out what we're going to do to actually accomplish our goals. Because Montpelier has a lot of goals, and we never really talk about what it's going to take to do them. So let's start with that and work backwards. I think division statement can work either way. You can start with one or you can end with one. I think we're going to be learning as we go. I just think that's inevitable, which means that we're doing it at the end is what makes sense because I don't think we have a clear one going in. Well, mm -hmm. either way, it can be a check, right? Like you were saying, you can read it backward or you can read it forward. So if we start backward, we just have to make sure that the vision statement ends up being what we want it to be. And if it doesn't, then you got to go back lower and then change. Yeah, but so so to like, use time well though. I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I, know, I think yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I, just, I think it works both ways. We would just have to make sure that. Yeah, and it's the same way. That's been the anyway. hard part. That like when it came to the historic for me, um, working with the HPC, I don't know a lot of the stuff. So I've just got to throw stuff out there, and then eventually go and tell them we're going to have to knit this together. Whatever you have for your aspiration, we've got to work together with your strategies and vice versa yeah. you know you you can't have a strategy that doesn't help support a goal that you have right. um, and so we would work back and forth and I think you're right but the vision is going to work the same way just on a much bigger scale yeah. that at the end we have to have a vision and if we look at the vision and everything underneath it doesn't add up okay. and we have all the we will have 12 you'll have 12 of those or slash well, implementation. implementation. Oh, sort of look at those for themes and yeah. build that into a vision. And, yeah. Well, we'll have a lot more than twelve aspirations. Right. Yeah. Just, these guys yeah. have several. So, but you'll theoretically those will kind of all theme yeah. generally, yeah. and that can help. Yeah. We won't have nothing to go out. Okay. Yeah, By I think time. no. We're gonna have a lot. I think we're gonna learn a lot through this process, as like the planning commission itself. Um, if we were all like Mike and John and had this all this background in planning, maybe we do know right now what we want to, you know. But I think, considering our, our variety of backgrounds, we're going to learn stuff. And, yeah. And Stephanie, we did this in the past too, so she's kind of got some in there. And guess who's not here? Guess who's not here? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, I, I just, yeah. So I'm I'm going to put this I'm going to put this outline out. For us to sort of all be on the same page about where we're going, like as a plan, and uh, I don't know if John will be entirely happy because we've had it seems like different visions of how we're going to proceed with this have been batted around. At least that's my been my perception, and why I'm kind of confused about it. So I'm going to lay this one out there, which goes it seems to align and, and with we what Mike's planning with, to do. We could still take what we have here and still plug it into. I think mm -hmm. John has a lot of process pieces. Um, he wants to do do the yeah. web, which I want to too. I want to write this so we can get this and right. do an online plan. And I, th I think there's been some different visions about the process we'll follow. I'm going to lay this one out here, which seems to which what I'm, all I'm trying to do is basically align yeah. with what you're doing, and you're the one with the full time job doing this all the time. So I, it'd be wise of us <laughs> to follow your lead anyway. So that's, I'm just letting everyone know that just out out mm -hmm. loud that like that's that's yeah. What we'll if we lay it out, then by. at least we can. Whether um, people agree or disagree, we can decide that's that's how we're going to proceed. And hopefully, we'll talk minimally about about planning when we start talking about the actual implementation with our meetings. Uh, after that October hearing, yeah, we can start to maybe put on the agenda both. Like you'll have housing done by then, right? So we yep. can we can look at both of these. Maybe yep. that first November meeting. Okay. 
And as I said, the, most of the energy plan may end up being one that, that we can kind of set off to the side. Because we're, we're, if we get the municipal planning grant to write that chapter, that's going to be one that there will be an entire process to develop that. And we can task them with the whole, I want your thousand words, I want your, <laughs> if I'm paying you lots of money, this is what we want. Um, because they can do all the public input and have the, the really detailed discussion of how we're going to be net zero by 2030 and be have a community net zero by 2050. And that's going to take out an entire public process, and they'll take care of that. Okay. Bucks me, I can't remember that last one. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to put a small amount of effort into digging through my email to find the list. That I've got it downstairs. Point. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's what that's what we're planning to do going forward. Can, um, can we just make mm -hmm. sure? I just want to make sure I'm clear about. So we're not meeting on the 14th, but then the meeting after that, we're gonna have, if all goes to plan, start preservation. Maybe the 28th. Here would be, assuming the 14th is Columbus Day, then 28th would be the next meeting, and we would have um, a design. Public hearing on the map mm -hmm. and the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Um, We'll do some outreach. We'll try to get historic preservation to do some outreach, and then we'll have a meeting, see if we can get some as much public input. I will try to reserve the extra room, so we've got both rooms. Okay. And we'll, you know, we'll talk about the regs and the boundary map. Yep, the, the regs meeting. and the boundary map. We'll get feedback from the public and from historic preservation. Okay. And uh, then that will just be taking it all in, and then, yeah. the, and then the meeting following that will decide what we do next, which most likely will be to make changes or not make changes based on the feedback we received and then send it to city council okay. and in to terms start the actual formal process. Well, we would we would then warn a public, a formal public hearing. We could either go to city council. I mean, I'll probably invite the councilors to the meeting just so that way they can get, a, if we get enough of them here, we can ask them. I can poll them afterwards to go through and say, what did you guys think? Are you guys in support of making these types of changes? You know, are we just wasting time at the Planning Commission to adopt these things and give them to you if you guys aren't going to be interested in taking it up? Okay. Um, so you can kind of get a poll from them. If there aren't enough of them here, then we may go through, have a public hearing, ask to be on the council agenda, go and meet at the council in December. That wouldn't take away from one of our work meetings because that would be meeting in, on their night, just probably you and, you know, whoever wants to come. We can go and sit down, present to the planning, uh, present to council. Here's what we presented. Here's what we heard. What do you guys think? Are you guys interested? Some of the squeakiest wheels will probably come back and, and give their uh, version, which is fine. It's good. Um, and then they can um, make a decision as to whether this is a good idea to move forward or not. Okay. And the, the process for our informal public hearing um, we, do we have a process for like getting feedback and giving the presentation? Will that be historic preservation, or will we be talking about? I'm I think, gonna. I think we should. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna invite. Or, I mean, we've got historic preservation presentation that they gave us. Yeah. And I missed that meeting as well, so um, we'll probably take uh, take a look at that and see if it's something that we can put back up. See if we can get historic preservation to be here for the meeting on the 28th, and yeah. then. And then we would do the presentation and go and say, this is what's been presented to us. And if there's a spokesman from Historic Preservation that's willing to take some questions, I think that's okay. helpful. I think yeah. it's helpful to have them, yeah, maybe there for questions. Meredith's also a really great resource to, yeah, she for, for those kinds of questions. Bit. But I think uh, since we're the ones having to make the decision, I think yeah. that, okay. uh, this is going to be tough having, like, having a month between meetings but um, I'll, I'll just I'll send you some ideas for the agenda for that night and mm -hmm. and we'll plan to start it off by doing an update or presentation from I guess I'll do that uh, on where we are with the regs and where we are with the boundary map and explain our thinking yep are we that, able to meet on the 7th we would not be able on the 7th is DRC and DRB have this room, okay. so no, no, it fine. just means we wouldn't be on television. We'd have to take and record our own minutes. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, I'm just saying we. If, I mean, if it's a, 
it's not impossible. I mean, we yeah. don't. If it's, I, would, I would only say it was going to be tough because it was just because I know we'll that all of this information that's, yeah. that's, that's in my brain right now is going to fly away. Yeah. In the next no, month. I hear you. No, I just think um, if you, I, I think yeah. there's some value to kind of keep focus as best we can. It's, you know? it, but I it's mean, not that big a deal. I'll, just have to, I'll, I'll read in, up that day. Well, I mean, we can. We I can get other rooms. I mean, there's a community room over in the police station. Um, the worst case scenario is you're down in the zoning office where we've got a table that can sit eight or ten. We just have to make sure we get some signs. But there is a 30th, so this is a five. September has five Mondays. So actually, if we were to meet on the 7th, it would be two weeks from today. Yeah. And the 28th is actually five weeks from today. Yeah. So it's not, it's not as crazy an idea as you might yeah, think. Yeah, it doesn't pull us out of sync that much. So, <laughs> some material to review later. What's going on? <laughs> so, if you want to try to, if, if we do want to try to meet on the seventh, um, you have to just give me. I'll be out of town. Notice on the seventh. Okay. Unless you want to be chair for a day. I, I don't mind that at all. I'm just wondering if, if there is some want to. It's been kind of keep us. Yeah. Focus on it. We haven't seen Barb in a few weeks either. Quite a while. She might, she might appreciate getting back up to speed, or I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um, do we want to just poll? I mean, considering there's only three of you left, do we want to? Do you want to poll the can we rest poll? of the commission just to go and say, hey, would, who's interested in meeting on the seventh? Yeah, we can do that without any. Just a public. Yeah, that's just yeah. poll. That's just yeah. a polling as long as yeah, you're discussing policy, yeah, setting the idea. meeting. Yeah. If you guys want to poll, do you have a sense of what we would have on the agenda for that? Just trying to. What's going to happen between now and two weeks from now that we could kind of chew on? I was maybe just sort of in, a, in advance of pre preparing for the 28th. Yeah, we could have some information to prepare for the 28th, and we Make could sure we could review. I mean, you guys have the final historic. Yeah. We could start reviewing that piece. We could review what Kirby sends out on the. The calendar and the FYI, this is how we're going to do the plan adoption process. And here is our here's our plan adoption process, and here's our design review potential process. All right, that actually sounds all right. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll include that. In the okay. Yeah. So do you, do you want me to send it out, or do you want to send it out? Or I'll include it in the email, and then you could like follow up if you wanted to 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 say, hey, you know, to draw attention to it because it's going to be a lot of stuff in my email. So you could. You know, it's basically, what I'm saying is we okay. both do it. All right, I'll follow your lead. Let's get it done. Okay. All right. And I can, I can certainly meet. Yeah, and then. Oh. oh <laughs> All for naught. All for naught. <laughs> I definitely won't be able to on the seventh. Sorry. That's my more hay. So not more hay. It is. It is my. It's my anniversary. Oh, so. well, I <laughs> did a really great job of remembering yeah. before the meeting was over. Well, I just going, yeah, just going by the numbers. No, no, hey, don't worry about it. We have got Columbus Day weekend. I'll still include it, but um, yeah, well, it would just be without Mike. And, yeah, so. well, yeah. I'll just, yeah, I'll frame it up in a certain way. Okay. All right. So I think with that, we can adjourn. Got through our agenda for the night. Can we even vote? We can't no. vote. Yeah, we're just, just leave. Yeah. We're just going to end Bye. this meeting. An Irish goodbye. <laughs>